From the inner sense of time Comes the ancient poet's rhyme Bringing us the master key To open up the mystery From the depth of time and space We arrive in quiet grace Finding what is meant to be As we explore the mystery Pouring forth from days gone by We can hear the poet sigh From the depth of ecstasy Moving into mystery Hello and welcome again to Creative Connections. I'm your host, Gary Blanchard, and today my guest is a wonderful artist, Linda Barnes. Linda, welcome. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. It's wonderful to have you. Uh, I have seen your artwork at, at various places. Uh, amazed me, we were talking a little bit. Uh, your background, uh, tell me about your, your training in art. Well, I, I always liked to draw or color in coloring books, and, and so I um, kept entering these uh, contests where you, you copy the picture and you send them in, um, you know, they were in the back of comic books, and finally one of those from artists that online art school came to my house uh, when I lived in Kansas, and um, they said, you know, they would accept me, and I, my dad said, no, 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 you know, we can't afford that. So then he told me that I, my dad told me I won some art lessons. I was 12 and I was very excited and I took a summer course in pastels and got some background in art then, but I, I don't think I won the art contest. <laughs> <laughs> I think my dad just wanted me to um, stop sending stuff off. Okay. And then I did have a, um, a high school teacher when I was a freshman in high school when I lived in California that was an amazing artist uh, and he was an amazing teacher and that's where I got a little bit more detailed interest and then after that I would just maybe take a, a class here and there you know with uh, you know a couple friends would get together and, and I haven't really done much with art until I finally retired. All right yeah so it's it's nice to to have the chance to really spend time doing something that you love and uh, you know your work it's so beautiful. Uh, we've got one right up here, and I, I just love the ocean or the the lake. It is the ocean, actually. Oh, it actually, it's the ocean. Yes. Okay. And the the texture here is is just absolutely amazing. And then the the clouds and the, like the various layers of of clouds. Is this from a particular place? Or? It is. It is. It's a from um, up in Lebec, Maine, um, in our friend's backyard. But when I <laughs> showed her the picture, she says, "I don't have those flowers in the middle there." But I had to put something there because it was too bare. So right. So I mean, that was her comment on it. Not she didn't. <laughs> you know. So you know. You know how that goes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Everyone's a critic. Yeah. Yeah. The the flowers here too. I, I love the, the purples and the blues. Thank uh, you. Just absolutely beautiful. What what medium do you generally work in? Well, I started when I retired using acrylics, you know, and then I was doing that a lot. And um, and then since there's a little tiny bit of cleanup, um, and I was working out of my bedroom at the time, I didn't have any place, any space set up, so I. Um, we actually set up a space in my basement, which with good lighting, and um, it's in a walkout basement. And then I um, started using pastels. But I did acrylics for a while. But like I said, you know, you can't just leave it. You have to clean it all up, even if you have a studio, because you can't let your brushes sit. Right. So, so this would be that's acrylic. Acrylic. Yeah. Okay. So let's go to the next picture, and uh, that will disappear in a moment. So this this is a 
I, I like this. This is a little more uh, subdued. Uh, not, uh, there's a, a word that's not coming to, <laughs> to me right now, but it, it will. Uh, impressionist. That's what I was looking for. And that's pastel, so it's why it looks a little... And it's blown up very big compared to... The, it was probably this big when I did it, so, you know, it's... Okay. But, yeah, it's not nothing... Not one of my favorites, but it's that barn in um, Palmer, right? Uh, not really sure, but a lot of people have painted it from around okay, here. Yeah, I, it, it's very uh, evocative, and uh, you know, to, to me, it's like you, you've got the three different shaped structures, and I can see where that would kind of draw people to to want to to paint it because it's you know all these different perspectives. No, oh, and that's that's another one that's really, really big, but that's uh, on the side yard of that first picture of the house up on Main, and that's pastel. Okay. This, this I really love. And I do have a little bit of sheen there from when I took the picture. You know what I mean? It's, yeah, it's yeah. shiny because I coated right, it. But um, right. that's in, um, I think it's in, well, my husband takes the pictures. That might be West Brookfield. Okay. And I don't know if Stanley can get in close to here, but the, the wood grain is just absolutely amazing. That was, yeah, it just, sometimes things just happen, you know, yeah, as you're yeah. going along. It comes out the way, hopefully almost the way you want it. Yeah, uh, I, I feel looking at it like I'm right there looking at the wood. And it's so true because you get these old weathered buildings. Yeah, they're and they beautiful. don't weather uniformly. Right, they're, they're beautiful. They, they actually catch your eye yeah and my husband has a great eye for taking pictures which is what I work from all his okay. pictures yeah so you you do your work in your studio yeah based on on photos yes and the other thing too or are, are the stone foundation there uh, is very very detailed well thank you how, how large is the original it's a tw uh, 20 by 16 20 by 16 yeah okay so, uh, and that's acrylic. All right. This is just <clears throat> the the colors. Of course, you've got the the reflection, and I love that it's actually deeper coloring in the reflection than the sky. And that's Beaver Lake, another picture my husband took. Okay. So, when you're working on a painting, how, how long does it take you? Um, it depends, but it's, I don't work very steadily on anything. I'm, I'm not disciplined, so, um, you know, I, I go, uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe five or six hours at the most, you know, and that's, I've never really timed it because, you know, I heard Gary talking about that, Gary Livencott, and when you start to think about how much time it's, <laughs> you know, and, and that's a very simplistic thing compared to what he does. But, um, yeah. yeah, I think um, it depends on, you know, if you, you start going with it and it actually keeps going good, you know, and you don't have to go back and fix things. Yeah, yeah. When you, when you I guess you go through the, the, the photos that your husband takes. Yes. And, and I've seen some of his photos on, on Facebook, mm -hmm. and he really does take beautiful photographs. You then find ones that kind of speak to you? Yes, but it's hard because, you know, I just never... He has so many, you know, that it's, it's hard to pick. I think if somebody said to me, paint this, I'd be better off, you know, because <laughs> I didn't work on it till it got done. Okay. And your artwork, uh, you're uh, connected with Workshop 13? Yes. So people can find some of your paintings? At the artworks. At I do the have. Artworks on, I have. On Main Street. Yes, I have a few um, pictures in there. 
uh, paintings. They're, I think they're mostly pastel, um, but yes, I do have some there, and, um, and then I do have a few things that, um, that have been in Lost and Found, too, which is a, a very eclectic shop. It's really unique. It, it is, it is. When you, what, what made you decide after retirement, this is what I'm going to do? Well, I used to have things hanging in my office that I would do, and of course, you know, people would come in and say, oh, I like that, or I like that, and you know, I thought, I never put enough time into it, or they'd ask me if I gave lessons, or some people would say, what would you charge for it? And then I'd tell them, and they'd say, oh, you know. <laughs> but uh, my boss did buy a picture from me um, when I first started hanging my pictures at work, and then um, another employee, um, a friend of mine, asked if I would, she bought one of my paintings off my wall too, and then she asked me to, to do a couple of commissions for her. Like a, she went on a vacation in Europe with her friends that um, went on a canal boat that you rent and it's your own little, like a little houseboat. And um, I, she gave me several pictures. So I can, and then she sent that picture to, that I painted to her friend in, um, Europe, so I can say I have a, some pictures in Europe, okay. a picture in Europe. Yeah, yeah. And then she had me do a few other pictures too. So she was, uh, you know, but she moved away. But she was a great, great friend as far as that went. You know, and it's it's kind of sad because people have gotten to the place where they think, well, I can go to Walmart hmm. and buy something for ten dollars. And they can, yeah. <clears throat> right. But they don't realize that an original artwork, it's an investment of time. And I, I don't know if you feel this way, but I think it's also like an investment of part of your, your soul. It is. It is. And I know that um, I, I gladly, like my brother-in-law and my sister-in-law were over visiting and he um, said he'd like to see some of my artwork, and I didn't have a lot at, at home that was actually ready to, you know, in a, in a mat at least. And he wanted to buy something. Of course, it felt better to give it away than to, you know, and I gave, then my sister-in-law, of course, didn't ask for one when I gave him one, so I gave her one too. And, mm -hmm. and my children, they, you know, I give them paintings, or they'll send me a picture of something they've taken, and I will paint that picture for them. Right. So, and, and I, I guess that's really all the satisfaction you really need. Yeah, yeah. You know, sometimes, uh, you know, obviously the money is nice. Yeah. But I, I think sometimes just the sense of appreciation. Definitely, yes, definitely. That they realize that you tried to create something beautiful for them that they, that they feel good about. So, yes, yeah, so my daughter was down in North Carolina for a while and she had taken some sunset pictures, so I did one for her. And, um, and then she did take a, a picture that she loved of the that barn, but it was a bigger picture of it. It's like the barn close-up that you pointed out the um, wood on. Right. When when you sell a painting, I, I'm, I'm a musician, and I, I create a song, and people might buy a copy of the song, but I still have the song. When you sell a painting, is there a sense of loss? Um, yes and no. I guess I take a picture of it and then I have to move on. You know, I mean, I, that's what I've started to do. But I know that I was with an art group um, in Aguam when, um, and um, we did an art show and somebody bought a picture from me, it was a watercolor, and I was there with other people, and I was like thanking her profusely, and <laughs> explaining to her what it was, and that I had cut part of the picture off to make it look better. And they're going, just you know, quiet. <laughs> Would you stop it? You know, um, you know. I so I do appreciate it, but I I think it's easy enough to let it go because I know that I can still mix, make something else. So okay, yeah. Let's see what we have here. Okay, and this might be that. Yes, that's a close-up of that barn. Yeah, and and again, here there's the the texture of the the foliage off to the left. That uh, 
sort of is really makes me think of fallen New England. Yes. And that's just a quick, um, you know, yeah. pastel of a, it's a Swedish, it's a Swedish symbol um, that they have little painted horses that they, okay. it's a big, big thing in Sweden. All right. I, I like the, the yellow wash and that it's not totally yellow. You know, that's, yep. uh, I, I, for some reason, having some of that white around it makes it stand out more to me. And that's the picture that my um, daughter sent me from North Carolina. It was okay. a, their view from their um, their deck. Wow. Okay, that's uh, very beautiful, and I love the the sun, either rising or setting. I think it's a sunset. Yes. Yes. And that's just something. Somewhere in town, I went with my husband, and um, he took the picture. He was looking at a. Um, a conservation site that was supposed to be cleaned up, I think. Okay, yeah. And again, the, the purple in the sky is just absolutely wonderful. Yeah, sometimes I make up the skies because they don't seem to always be that interesting. Well, so. true, <laughs> yeah. Let's, uh, you, you've got so many great, let's see if we can, <clears throat> this is really nice too. What? Uh, that would be with um, pen and ink and watercolor. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I, I really, there's something about that, that, you know, flowers. So often we think of flowers in groups. Yes. But there's something about that solitary flower that you can focus in and see more of the individual beauty rather than this whole group of yeah. flowers together. Huh? There we go. Uh, let's, oh, this, all right, let's, uh, this <laughs> is really, really great. And that was just something that I was fooling around with and then I, you put a mat on almost anything, you know, and then put it in a frame, and it it it, it can it can work. So. Yeah, the the feeling of motion in this. What I I particularly like is how this fish is sort of like in the process of diving. Yeah. And then uh, is that I guess like just a, a splatter type technique? Yes. Or? Yes. Let's, uh, this one is really grabbing my attention. And that's, uh, I think it's on the Ware River. You know, I always have to ask my husband before I, um, you know, <laughs> tell somebody what it is, but that's uh, a picture he took on the Ware River. So, yeah. So it's, there is a little bit of, I think there might be a little bit of, pen and ink, but I don't know if that's just a uh, charcoal pencil out, out here on that side. Okay. The, the colors are amazing. And what, I, what really draws me is it's very clear what it is a picture of, and yet it is kind of like there's a mist, mm -hmm. you know, and you're not seeing all that crystal clear, but it's just wonderful. I love this picture. Thank you. This is nice and obviously winter time. And actually my, the picture, the photo was much better on, I think I've done this several times, but this probably has some pen and ink in it. But my husband, um, actually got in nature's photography or something like that and got you know the month award the award of the month for that but it's okay. much better in a picture I, 
you know, well, I'm, I'm sure the, the picture is great, but I love the, the trees. Uh, just, it, it captures that look. Stark winter. <laughs> of, yeah, exactly. Very well said. Stark winter. Mm -hmm. Very nice. That's a pastel up in Maine. Okay. My wife and I sometimes go to uh, Jamestown, Rhode Island. And uh, there's a, a little park there called Beavertail. And you have where the water comes in on the rocks like that. Uh, and it just is, is so, there's something magical about watching the, the waves come in. It's nice at a beach, but when you have the, the rocks, and they, it, it's like a majesty Right, to it. it rolls up and pulls back. Let's look at that one. And that's watercolor and pastel. Okay. <clears throat> so, what drew you to, to this? Well, strawberries always seem to make a nice picture for some reason. And so we add some strawberries and um, the plate. So I just put it out on our deck and took a picture. I was actually my picture for once. And I did it a while ago and then put a little bit more pastel on it um, just because it wasn't, wasn't speaking to me. The, and then you put it in a mat in a frame and it, <laughs> you know, off it goes. Yeah. I have First of all, I just had strawberries for lunch today. Okay. So uh, I'm I'm actually tasting them again, <laughs> which is really nice. But the, the the plate is so perfect with the the pattern on the plate, and that takes me back to childhood. So that this uh, picture is just something that, to me, I look at it and it makes me feel happy and it, it brings pleasant memories. Let's look at, and actually I do want to, all right, that, since I stayed up. Okay. Uh, and that's an early watercolor. I don't think I, but it, it's, it's of my cat, so I, you know. What, what is great about this are the eyes. The eyes are so natural cat eyes. Thank you. The the coloring and it's it's like I you know, my my cat looking at me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this had to have been done from a photograph because you would never get a cat to <laughs> sit still that long. Right, it was. <laughs> it was a cat that you know, and it, as you know you put down a, any kind of box, a cat oh, yes. will try to get in it. What I love are, are pictures of lions and tigers will get into boxes if they <laughs> get them out. Yeah. And here's another cat. That's another, and that's a um, acrylic. Okay. Uh, this one here. That is my wife's favorite flower, the iris, <clears throat> and again, just not having all the background, and just a light wash behind part of it, just absolutely beautiful. Thank you, and that's watercolor and pen and ink. Okay. That's just one of those pictures that you just make up in your head. Yeah, yeah. It's absolutely, I, the, the color progression is really great. And as you look at it, you begin to see, that's like a little stream there mm -hmm. and some grass, but even without seeing something in it, it just grabs your eye and just kind of makes you feel. And that's what I've been 
doing a lot of lately with pastel just because if I haven't done anything all day long, I, I can run down and quickly finish one of those, like, you know, in an hour or two, depending on if it works all right. And then I, and when I spray them, sometimes it it gets, a, I spray them with a fixative. Sometimes it makes them darker, sometimes it splotches on them, but mm -hmm. they're yeah. nothing um, that I would cry about if I lost it because I can do so many of them quickly. And that's a watercolor. Okay. Yeah, and that's in Maine on, uh, it was just this car that was always drawing our attention. We'd drive it by. It was an old wrecked car sitting by this old, yeah. old garage. Yeah. You know, it's, it's a, a funny thing because man-made things like this that we tend not to think of as being beautiful or artistic really can be. If they're in the right setting, they just, they just, they yeah, yeah. just draw you to them. And, you know, you see everything kind of grown up around it. And you just picture in a few years later, that car might even be covered. Yes, yes, because it, we saw that there for many years, you know, and then, then it was gone. But I don't know, I don't think it was covered. I think that everything was taken down because we were looking for it and we couldn't find it, so. Yeah, yeah, so, uh, let's see what we have here. And that's a pen and ink of, uh, I think of a house that was torn down when they had to put in the uh, uh, new police station in Palmer. It was a little okay. house near a country bank. And that's pen and, well, I think I said that, pen and ink. Yeah, yeah. You know, this, what, what first thing I think of, actually, when I see this, is I think of the, the lost towns of the Quad. Oh, yeah. Because it would be houses like this that would, would have been torn down. Right. So that people in Boston could drink water. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yes. Uh, and it also kind of reminds me of an illustration from a book that I might have read back in the 50s when I was a, a kid. Maybe a, a Hardy Boys oh, mystery yeah. Or, yeah. or something like that. Uh, it's amazing what you can do without using a lot of color. And, but it's so, you know, just, uh, and here, you can see the streak of the, the glass, which would have been the old-fashioned style wavy glass. Right, right. Uh, just really nice. Thank you. That's up in Maine, too. Okay. Let's give some equal time to the canines here. <laughs> and that's my daughter and son-in-law's dog and um, Sam. So I thought I'd do a picture. You know, I looked through some of my pictures to see if I can find something. And um, so I did that and gave it to them. Yeah, the, the detail on the fur. And that's pastel, so you can use, I think I might have used pastel pencils uh, after I did the pastel itself. Okay, that, it's just, you, you feel like you could just reach out <laughs> and pet it mm -hmm. and, and feel the softness of the fur. Thank you. Linda, this has been really wonderful and thank you for sharing your art with us. Oh, I appreciate you having me on. I really, I really do. It's, the only other time I've been on TV was uh, you know dance party when I was in <laughs> junior high school. So <laughs> Okay. And we thank you for joining us on Creative Connections, and I'll see you next time. From the inner sense of time Comes the ancient poet's rhyme Bringing us the master key 
Open up the mystery From the depth of time and space We arrive in quiet grace Finding what is meant to be As we explore the mystery Pouring forth from days gone by We can hear the poet sigh From the depth of ecstasy Moving into mystery